Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in world soccer. We will get you through match day number six and get you ready for match day number seven as we turn from the action on Black Friday here in the United States. What we're going to do, we're going to go through all of the games, give you some highlights, and obviously wrap up our coverage today with what happened with the U.S. and England goalless draw. And we will hear from both managers coming up in just a little bit. So let's run through the action on the day, starting off bright and early. Remember, four matches starting at 5 o'clock in the morning, East Coast time. And it was a shocker out of the blocks with the uh, action going on with Iran and Wales. The earliest match of the day, definitely a shock result. Late in the 80s, about in the 83rd minute, Wayne Hennessy, the keeper for... The, the Wales side ends up getting a VAR-reviewed and upgraded yellow card to a red, 10-man Wales without your starting keeper, and Wales loses by the score of 2-0. Two goals, one at 90 plus 8, one at 90 plus 11. Here's the first goal on the board on the breakthrough against the 10-man Wales side. It is uh, Ruzbe Chejmi getting the 1-0 advantage, courtesy of our friends at Telemundo Sports. Estaban buscando a Taremi. Este está abierto. Wales would go on to lose by the score of 2-0, sending shockwaves through the group. And we'll keep an eye on what happens now for match day three. Second match, 8 o'clock, it was Senegal and Qatar. And it had its, its moment. Senegal had an early lead. Here's a Boulaidia putting Senegal on the board. El centro al área, la pelota queda suelta. Gol. Gol. De Senegal, el error en la defensa se la dejó servida, se la dejó quieta para que viniera. Bulay Día y Marque, el primer gol de Senegal en esta Copa del Mundo. Lo gana el conjunto africano, lo gana el equipo de LUCC, lo gana Senegal sobre el final de la primera etapa. Senegal gets the 3-1 win over the host country, and the host country is eliminated from making it to, uh, out of the group stage and into the knockout, so they will have just one match to go in their tournament as host. Senegal at a minus 137 gets the win. Netherlands and Ecuador. Netherlands had a 1-0 lead. Ecuador thought they equalized in the first half late. It was called back because of obstruction. So early in the second half, Inter Valencia gets on the board for Ecuador in the 49th minute. Once again, courtesy of our friends at Telemundo Sports. De Jong. La pierde y la recupera. Plata. Cuidado con esta. Viene el empate. Está. And that's how the match would end. A 1-1 draw at a plus 244, which leads us to England and the United States. You wondered about heavy legs from both of these teams. And with the United States, no Gio Reyna starting. 
Pretty much the same sides that were trotted out in match day one were there for match day number two. Haji Wright, the only change for the United States, no changes for Gareth Southgate. This moment early on for the United States almost made it 1-0. Christian Pulisic, once again, courtesy of our friends at Telemundo Sports. Va McKenny, es buena esta para Musa, si domina para pegarle, no pudo. Christian Pulisic, ahí va Pulisic, se pegó en el travesaño. La pelota se salva Inglaterra. ¿De dónde sacó ese disparo? Increíble. Empieza a tocar la pelota con la pierna derecha para tratar de hacer hacia el centro, pero abre el balón hacia la izquierda y saca un bombazo. Increíble el bombazo de Pulisic. Además, yo pensé que se había desviado en tripiero. Goalless draw by the time it was done at a plus 326. Let's get into the numbers on the day for this particular game. And as you look at the numbers, it was deep uh, in charge of possession for uh, England early on. They were high in the 60% uh, percentile with all of the possession numbers, but that did even out over time. Looking at the numbers on the day by the time it was done, England 55-45 in possession. The United States had a slightly larger XG at 0.61 to 0.54. Ten total shots for the United States. Only one of them on target. Eight shots for England and three on target. Corners, seven to three in favor of the United States. Only one offside called in the match, and that was against England. Fifteen fouls for the United States against nine called on England. Uh, one big chance and big chance missed on both sides. Once uh, one hit the woodwork, that was the Pulisic highlight that we played you just a little bit ago. Two counterattacks led to two shots during those counterattacks for the United States, but nothing coming of it. Six shots inside the box for each. Shots outside the box obviously meant it was 4-2 for the United States. Three saves on the day for Matt Turner, only one for Jordan Pickford. Passing numbers, 87% accuracy for England on 541 passes. The United States, 84% accurate on 424. 35 long balls to 20 in favor of England. Three crosses to two in favor of England. Both teams were successful on the dribble five times. Possession lost about 50-50. Literally, it's like 50.3 to 49.7. 111 times to 108 to the United States. The... Uh, the uh, three Lions won 38 of the 74 duels, so basically one more than the majority, and they won 11 of the 21 aerials, so almost uh, 50, let's see, you're having me do math, so uh, one out of 11 is 091, so 51, 49 basically, and your aerials won tackles on the day, including some at very stout moments for the United States, very necessary moments. 12-8 in tackles for the United States, 9-3 in interceptions, 19, out of, uh, 19 clearances to 14 for England on the day. So goalless draw, we'll go over the standings in just a little bit, but let's hear from the managers after the match first. Garrett Southgate was uh, interviewed by uh, Gabriel Clark of ITV Sports. Jenny Taft of Fox Sports caught up with Greg Berhalter. Gareth, how did you sum up tonight? Um, exactly the sort of game I thought it would be. Really tough. Um, a good opponent who very, very athletic. Um, I knew it would be difficult for us after such a high to then replicate that type of performance. So I'm really pleased with how the players have applied themselves. I think some of our quality in the final third could have been a little bit better. But we've shown great resilience to defend against uh, an opponent that kept asking questions. and. Really, we've controlled the game well from the back and just not been able to open up with that, that really clear-cut chance. What was missing in terms of that offensive approach? Was it, was it also a physical thing tonight? Yeah, I think a little bit of zip. Um, you know, we didn't quite have that same zip. Um, but that's going to happen. This is tournament football. We're not going to roll through a tournament and, and um, uh, uh, sweep through everybody without having nights like that where you've got to show different qualities to get the result. On a night when you need some offensive zip, why was there no place uh, for Phil Foden? Well, I thought it was the right thing to uh, to keep the team uh, from the start. And then the the wide players, we went with Jack and Marcus ahead of, of Phil on the changes. We thought Jack would keep the ball well for us and get us up the pitch. And Marcus's speed, um, uh, we thought, would also be a threat uh, coming into that last part of the game. What needs to improve then? Clearly, uh, point, uh, three points needs to be gained against Wales. So what needs to be better? Well, it will be a totally different game. You know, today we're playing a team that make it really difficult. I'm so pleased with the way we built from the back because... 
they make it really difficult to build and the, we've had real problems with that in the past and our two centre backs with the ball were absolutely outstanding you know they control the game I don't think people appreciate how good they are um, and they both defended their box brilliantly so this is a, a point gained n not a missed opportunity yeah for me you know I think uh, silver medal today was a point because it puts us in a really strong position in terms of qualification if we can win our last game then we win the group and um, you know the objective is to get out the group you've got three games to do it We've done it in two games in the last two tournaments. It's very un unrealistic to expect that every time. And, and how's Harry Kane? Because I know he's obviously done the distance tonight, but uh, he obviously had that, that foot issue. Yeah, I mean, I, I've not been able to assess any of the players post-game, but um, he's obviously got through the game fine, and his link play and his hold-up play was very important for us. Thank you, Gareth. Thanks, Gabriel. I think both teams worked hard. Both teams gave each other difficulties at times. And all in all, pleased with the effort. Anytime you can get a, a shutout in the World Cup, it's a good thing. Seven corners. I know set pieces have been an emphasis for this yeah. group. Is there anything you'd like to see differently moving forward? I'd like to see goals on set Me pieces. Me too. On set pieces. I think all of us. Yeah. What do you tell the guys? This is no, a proud we, moment yeah. for the U.S. No, we're proud, but our work's not, not done. We have to win on, um, on Tuesday. And so, you know, we know five points gets us in. we got to focus on the five points. So let's get into the standings after uh, Black Friday's matches on the 25th. So two matches are done in Group B. Two matches are done in Group A. The Netherlands and Ecuador, a, goal, a win and a draw each, and they have the same goal difference. So uh, match day three could be very, very interesting with uh, the Netherlands and Ecuador. And considering that they play each other, it will be Senegal, three points, lying in wait for a possible full points result from the other side. If Senegal can get a result against Qatar, it could send the loser, if there is a loser in Netherlands and Ecuador, or someone who loses out on math, out as well. So the Senegalese in decent position to make it through uh, into the knockouts. Uh, Qatar, the host country, two losses, goal difference of minus four. They are eliminated from making it to the knockouts. Group B. England and Iran. Now, here's where the fun is. England at four points. Iran with three. The U.S. two draws with two points. Wales with one. Remember, Wales will not have Wayne Hennessy in net for their match against England coming up on the 29th. So, if the U.S. gets a result against Iran, it is when they are in. And that's what you're looking for in a situation like this. But Iran, uh, after getting blown out in the first match once again because of the, uh, the goalkeeper concussion uh, protocols and uh, uh, emergency and situation and evaluations there, they lost 6-2 to England in the first match, but they turned around and beat 10-man Wales 2-0. So they're in decent position. England at 4, Iran at 3, USA at 2. England and Wales play each other. So in theory, if Wales were to upset England and get a result, then Iran and the USA, you have something happen there. Uh, then you really could have math involved. And so that's really going to be interesting on the 29th when Group B is locked down. So let's get into your matches for your Saturday. Match day seven. Tunisia and Australia will start things off at 5 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. Tunisia is a plus 114. Your draw is a plus 222 in the composite, courtesy of our friends at Odds Portal. And Australia is a plus 278. Poland and Saudi Arabia. Poland, a decided favorite at a minus 137. And your draw is a plus 268. Saudi Arabia is a plus 429. 11 o'clock Eastern. France and Denmark. France, a minus 127. Your draw is a plus 267. Denmark in the composite, a plus 392. 2 o'clock. Argentina and Mexico. This one will be interesting for more than one reason. Argentina at a minus 189. Your draw is a plus 312. Mexico is a plus 606. And we will be watching all of those matches all day on your Saturday, November 26. Goalless draw for the United States and England, which makes Group B very, very interesting come early next week. For everybody here at SDH, hope that you are enjoying watching the world competition all day long, all afternoon long, and trying to recover all night long before it starts all over again at 5 o'clock in the morning. So for everybody here at SDH, I'm just John. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy the games and enjoy the competition of the world's best overseas.